Antonia is now going to bring us our reading, which today comes from John chapter 3. And following that, Martin is going to be bringing us our talk this morning. The reading today is taken from John chapter 3, verses 13 to 17, where Jesus teaches to Nicodemus. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way Jesus spoke with Nicodemus all those years ago. Lord, we pray that you come by your spirit and speak to us this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, at our all-age service, I'm going to ask the children and the adults as well if they think I can take a Bible like this and fit it in various different things. I'm going to start by uh, showing them this box. I think it's probably fairly certain that I can get a Bible like this in this box. It's quite big. I've then got a smaller box, and then I'm going to show them this box. And this is where it gets a bit trickier because, as you can see, they're about the same size. And actually, when I put them like that, well, you might think they would fit in, but actually, it doesn't quite fit in this box. I've then got a smaller tin. I'm going to show them and ask them if I can fit it in this tin. Well, it's fairly obvious it won't. But then I'm going to show them this nutshell. There it is. And I'm going to say, do you think I can get the Bible in a nutshell? Now, of course, you may already work this out and you may be thinking ahead, you may be thinking, well, with printing these days, you know, we could print it really small, a tiny font, and we could fit a printed Bible in a nutshell like that. And you probably could do that, but I have to say, it probably wouldn't be very readable. Certainly with my eyesight, I wouldn't be able to read it. You might also be thinking that actually in this day and age, well, we could get a memory card or a memory stick uh, you know, a bit of computer technology, and we could put the whole Bible on there, probably the whole works of Shakespeare and a whole load of other things, and you could easily get it in this size. But actually, I've got a different way. Because when we say about uh, in a nutshell, we don't mean literally in a nutshell, do we? We tend to be speaking figuratively. We're talking about, can you make something concise? Could you put it in as a few words as possible? How would you summarise this book in as few words as possible? Well, here's my nutshell. I'll show you the gospel in the nutshell. So if I open it up, there we go. You can just see a little piece of paper in there. Now, if I tip that out, I'm just going to take the band off there and uh, I'll hold this up and you can see, there we go, a long, thin piece of paper. It's actually upside down. I'm going to have to turn it around. And uh, here we go. This is the Bible, the Gospel, in a nutshell. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That, friends, is the Bible in a nutshell. For God so loved the world. We live in a world, don't we, which is all about us. It's all about me, what I want, what works for me. But the Bible, this book, is different. It's all about God. It starts with God and it ends with God. And all throughout the middle of it, it's about God. God created the world and he loves it and he cares for it. If you've ever made anything yourself, you put lots of time and effort into it and you, you lovingly have created it and care for it, you'll have some idea of what that means. Uh, back in the garage at home, I've got a plane. In fact, I've brought it here. It's a wooden plane. I made this when I was about 11 or 12 years old. 
every time we have a clear out share and says, well, why do we need that plane? Why don't we just get rid of it? But you know, I remember drawing on the piece of wood, the outline of this plane. I remember planing it and uh, I remember cutting round this, um, this bit of it. I remember making the propeller, cutting these wheels out with a bandsaw. I put a lot of time and effort into this in woodwork classes when I was 11 and it really serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever. But I just can't quite bring myself to part with it and get rid of it because I made it. Now, if I feel like that about this old wooden plane, imagine how God feels about the world he's created. He loves it. He loves it so much that he gave his one and only son. You see, God loves the world he has created so much. But when you look around it, you realise that we're in a mess. We've mucked it up. You only have to look at the amount of plastic in the ocean, what's happening with climate change and global warming, the way we treat each other, the way uh, people are at war with one another, the way the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer, to realise that we've made a real mess. We've mucked it up. However you look at it, it is not good. And friends, we need rescuing. We need to be rescued because we can't rescue ourselves. We can't do it ourselves. We need to be rescued from our sin. We're incapable of rescuing ourselves, but God has sent his son. His son willingly left heaven and came to earth to rescue us. The verse goes on that whoever believes in him. Now, I think many people assume that being a Christian just means doing good And we are told to love God and to love our neighbour. But doing good isn't what makes us a Christian. What makes us a Christian is about believing. Let me explain. Assume I'm wearing a Chelsea football top. That doesn't make me a Chelsea football fan. And if you know me, you'll know there is no way I would support Chelsea. My boys support Chelsea. I'm a West Ham fan. But if you saw somebody wearing a Chelsea football top, that's a good sign that they are a Chelsea supporter. And whilst doing good doesn't save us, it is a sign that we have potentially been saved because we're loving God and loving our neighbour. So what is it that makes somebody Christian if it's not doing good? Well, it's about belief. Whoever believes in him, whoever believes in Jesus, believe Uh, that he lived and he died, belief that he rose again, belief in the words which he wrote or which other people wrote about him, the words he said which are written in this book. But John goes on in this verse to say that those who believe shall not perish. They won't be lost or destroyed. Elsewhere the Bible explains that the wages of sin is death. We've seen the whole of creation needs rescuing. The result of our sin is death. The planets we're living in, we're destroying, we're killing it. Over the last year, we've sadly become all too familiar with death, with physical death. But this is a different sort of death. This is about a spiritual death, a separation from God, a spiritual death. That's the bad news. But there is good news. Because we're told that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We will be with God forever. We will be reconciled to him, reunited with him. The Bible starts with man and God, or man and woman and God, in the Garden of Eden. And it ends with us being restored to fellowship and relationship with God. And once again, God walking with us, dwelling with us. A time when there will be no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain, and no more death. Because the old order of things has passed away. But eternal life doesn't start when we die. It starts now. So if you are asked 
what the Bible is all about, what it means to be a Christian. If you were asked, could you summarise the gospel in a nutshell like this? Well, not literally like this, but figuratively, could you summarise the Bible in a nutshell? Then remember this verse from John's gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Friends, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you love this world so much that you were willing to give your son, that he came, he lived, he died and he rose again for us so that we can be reconciled to you, so that we won't perish but we will have eternal life. Lord, help us to remember that and help us to share that good news with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue in our worship now as at our traditional service we sing the hymn Blessed Assurance and at our contemporary service we're going to be singing Oceans 